Hey there, welcome to the shop. Today I'm gonna to give you an idea of what it takes to put to back together a Dana 27 rear end out of this Volvo 1800. There are a lot of great tutorials out there for the Dana 30, but nothing I could find on the Dana 27. And I wanted to share my experience and some of the tips and tricks reassembling a Dana 27 rear end. Now before you even start, it's probably worth thinking about what it's gonna to take to do this work properly. This is not a screwdriver and wrench job. Here is some of the tooling I found helpful in rebuilding this differential. Now a trick I learned that works really well for getting the differential carrier out of the differential housing, you'll see in a minute. Now the trouble is that usually a differential carrier that's in the housing even if you're just test fitting it, and you don't have it fully uh, tensioned, preloaded, uh, it's still pretty hard to get this thing out of the differential case in a lot of cases. If, you're, if you've got their shims so that you're close enough that you don't have any wobble left or right, you don't have any slop in the gears and you're just setting backlash, you're probably tight enough in there that you're not going to easily get the differential carrier out. Now some people get a pry bar in there and pry it out, or they'll use a hammer and hammer it out, but you run a couple of problems there. One, if you try to pry it out, you're gonna get these nicks in the edge of the casing. You can see this one has a lot of those nicks because this is an older casing. A lot of people have been in here over the years. Eventually, you're gonna warp that flange, if not break the case altogether. So, I don't think that's the best way to do it. Uh, you can hammer on it from underneath if you don't have the pinion in there, uh, and I've had to do that before, but it's really, it's, it's not great for the differential carrier to do that. You want to use a, a bronze or a brass uh, drift if you do that. It's not my preferred way of getting it out. I'll show you a really neat trick that I picked up that makes getting the differential carrier out a snap. What we do is we'll take box end wrench and what we want to do is we want to put it on one of the, uh, one of the bolts for the ring gear. And now we're going to turn our pinion and it's going, to force the, it's going to force the differential carrier right out of the housing. So watch this. Look at that. This comes right out. It doesn't take a lot of force. Um, you may actually be able to turn it by hand depending on how tight you got the carrier in there. But this makes removing the carrier a lot easier than if you had to kind of pry or yank it out of the housing. Now the next thing I found that's a real, you, you have to do this if you're setting this up yourself. If you're, if you're not a professional, you don't know how to do this right away, you're gonna experiment a lot like I'm doing, you need to make setup bearings. Now what are setup bearings? Setup bearings are just a set of bearings that for the differential where you ground the ID, or in some cases the OD, of the bearing, the bearing K, the bearing uh, race, or the bearing uh, inside, so that it's a slip fit as opposed to a friction fit. Because you're gonna be taking these bearings on and off. You're gonna be pressing them on, taking them off, pressing them on, taking them off constantly. And A, you can really chew them up. So you're not gonna to wanna to run the ones you were experimenting with for days. But number two, it just takes forever. If I have to go to the press and press these on every single time I want to adjust the backlash, I'm gonna be at that press all day, every day. And then I'm gonna be using my uh, press tools to pull this bearing back off. Just get a second set of, uh, of bearings, Grind them down with a with a Dremel or an abrasive disc or you know, whatever you got. You know, make it make it smooth, make it nice. You want it as close as you can to the original fit. You don't want it slopping around, but it should just be able to come on and come off real easily. This is going to save you hours and hours. Basically, it's the difference between not being able to do this job and doing this potentially being able to do this job. Now on the Dana 27 rear ends in these Volvos. The shims are, not like, unlike the Data 30s where they're on the outside, the shims are going to be on the inside of the, with the carrier. So you're going to put your shims on first, then you're going to put your bearing, and then your bearing race, and that's going to all slot into the housing. I think this is a lot easier than the Dana 30 where you're trying to wedge shims in here and then shut and then wedge the differential in as well. This is, for me, to me, this is just much easier. It's safer. doesn't hurt the shims. All right, so let's set our carrier aside here for a minute. 
you can see in the housing, we've got our pinion. Now, what we want to do is set the height of the pinion in relationship to the ring gear. Volvo gives us a, a uh, pinion height of 2.094 as the stock setup. There's a couple of things about this you're going to want to be able to do. The first thing is you're going to need to be able to measure the height from the center line of the bear of the carrier bearing to the top of the pinion. So you're going to basically want to figure out kind of from here down in there into that pinion. The trouble is that Volvo once sold tooling that dropped into the, diff the, the case and allowed you to precisely measure that height based on having some, some perfectly turned circles that go across here and a reference uh, measurement. That's what you're going to see in the manual if you look at the old Volvo manuals for how to measure pinion height. You're not going to be able to get that tooling. Doesn't exist. Maybe if you find an old differential shop that worked on Volvos and it has that stuff laying around, but basically it's unobtainium. Now there's a much easier way to measure the pinion height that doesn't depend on finding Volvo tooling that doesn't exist anymore. What we want to know is the height from the top of the pinion to the center line of the bearing of, that's holding the differential carrier. We want to know that height. And that's what Volvo is going to tell us is 2.094 stock from the factory. But we can't really measure that center line accurately. So we can't sort of measure from that center line to the top of the pinion. How do we get there? Well, it's pretty easy actually. First, what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the top of the differential case to the top of the bearing. We're going to do that with a depth micrometer, something like this. Now it's going to be very important that you have a straight edge with a known and consistent thickness that you can use to hold the depth micrometer here. This is a piece of bar stock. You can't just pick bar stock from Home Depot. You're going to need precision ground bar stock and you're going to have to satisfy yourself that not only is it exactly the same width all the way across, but that it's flat or flat enough. And we're talking flat in terms of we're measuring in thousandths here, not tenths. So we don't have to get something perfectly level, but you're going to need something that a machinist would say, yep, that's flat for this purpose. Because if this is bowed in one way or the other by a thousandth or two, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead, uh, lead you wrong. So first we're going to measure the height from uh, the top of our straight edge to the top of the bearing race for the differential carrier. All right, 0842, some 08, 08425. Now I know this is 0840 stock. This is 840 thousandths thick. So that tells me the different distance between the top of the deck and the top of the bearing housing. Now I know the bearing housing, I know the dimension of the bearing housing, I know what it's supposed to be, but I can also measure that. So I want to make sure I really understand where I'm at. So our bearing race coming in at 2.894 so i take that divide it in half and that's going to give me the height to this from the top of the, from the top of this rule this rule to the center line so now I can measure from the top of the from the top of the housing to the top of the pinion. Okay. So I'm going to find a spot here where this is close to the top of the pinion. I'm just going to drive it down until I find where we are. All 
All right, take that measurement. There we are, so that gives us our pinion height. Now, one of the other things I've learned, and that gives us our pinion height. Now, one of the other things I've learned is that 2.094 pinion height is correct for older Volvo Spicer M27 differentials and axles. But later versions, and this is a later version, so it's 1962 Volvo, but this is not the original rear end in it. Later versions have a different, uh, may have a different pinion height. Or it could be that the gears that I'm using, which are not Volvo gears, because Volvo doesn't make and sell these gears anymore. Bastuk made these gears. These are not, either the housing isn't set up for 2.094, or these gears are not set up for 2.094. Because originally there would have been a oil baffle and a slinger around the pinion. But this particular gear and this housing, these make it way too tall. So you put it in, put it at 2.094. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's, it's way, it's way too far up into the ring gear. If you eliminate these and get down much, much further, give it, this gives you, uh, what is this? This, this slinger is 30, 35 thousandths. This baffle is 17, 18 thousandths. Take this stuff out, you're getting pretty close to the actual height that they, uh, that, that, that this pinion wants to run at. Now, when we go to remove the pinion, we're gonna have to get the flange off. And there's a couple of things I've learned doing this as well. Set this up on our jack stand here. You may have the old style yoke if you have a, an older uh, rear end, or you may have the newer uh, disc style yoke. Uh, it depends, on what, you, depends on, on what you've got. If you want to pull the flange off the older style, the older style yoke ones, you're going to need some tooling to pull that off, or a, probably a three jaw puller. I don't know. I don't have that kind of uh, that kind of flange. But for pulling this kind of flange off, what you'll want is a Volvo SVO 2261 puller. And it's important to use a puller like this because these flanges, if you yank them with a two-jaw puller or even a three-jaw puller, you may well warp this flange. And these are unobtainium. These you can't you can't buy these anymore. They're discontinued. I don't know where you'd find one, and they'd be very expensive to machine. I don't think you're going to see these in the aftermarket ever. You just have to going to have to find one and see if it's level and flat. So don't warp uh, your flange. Now, I couldn't find a 2261. It seems it's just as hard to find a 2261 as it is to find an original flange. So I made one. And but the way it works is you just screw it on, mates together, and then it uses this nut to drive. It's just, it's just a puller. It's just, just going to pull that flange off. And the reason why you need to pull that flange off is that the flange is on there on a spline. So it may be very tight to pull it off. Now, it turns out on mine, the flange is, 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 uh, is not tight on those splines. I was able to just literally pull it off by hand. I can slide it on and off. I'm not sure if that's good or not, but uh, I, didn't, I ended up needing the, uh, the fancy puller that I made, but you may end up needing to build something like this. If you're gonna make it and you don't have a machine shop at home, if you do, you know how to make this already, but if you don't have a machine shop at home, get a piece of round disc stock, a little bit larger than the flange itself, figure out the spacing of these holes. Now these holes, they're not equidistant. It's basically an X. So the, 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 the center to center here is different from the center to center here. So don't get caught by that. But make, some, make something that mates up and then just drill and tap a deep long hole through enough metal that you're gonna be able to resist the force of this bolt pushing against the flange. Use a grade eight bolt. In my case, it wasn't necessary, but you may need this.